Hey guys, welcome to the Crucible Cast. I'm Brad Andres, and I'm here with Mercedes and Alex to talk to you guys a little bit more about Keyforge Organized Play. Yes, and we have some really exciting news for you guys. Due to the success of all of our previous episodes, we've decided to kind of do more of a regular thing with this. And uh, we want to kind of get an episode going about once a month. Now, Alex is transitioning um, from the UK, so he's going to be flying back and forth quite a bit, and it might actually impact uh, the schedule a little bit. But go ahead and click that subscribe button, the little bell down at the bottom, uh, and then you can be notified whenever we have a new video available. Yeah, it's going to be awesome. Yeah, it sounds good. We're planning a full schedule, so we'll talk a lot, a lot of different things about organized play from the kits which we're going to talk about today all the way through to different variants and strategies and things that we can do playing the game going forward all the different ways you can engage with keyboard absolutely yeah, yeah. yeah. so fun. speaking of the kits mm -hmm. we'll get what we have here today yeah uh, we have the season one kit yep. um, and Ooh. some of the prizes to display yep a small sample of them yeah so these are um this is our entry level kit for keyforge uh, people who've played ffg games before will know we like our seasonal kits that rotate with seasons within the game and this is where we're going to kick off with Keyforge. Now, unlike previous kits, this is not a tournament kit. This is designed to have multiple uses where it's all about engaging and playing. It's not necessarily about who's winning and where you're placing. Mm -hmm. So you'll notice when you get the kits and you see them that there's the same number of everything in them. And they're rewarded mainly based on participation and having fun. Well, that's great. I mean, one of the, the core principles of Keyforge is about opening it up and that low barrier to entry. Yeah. And yeah, so just I think engaging this... engaging a variety of different players, yeah, yeah, yeah. not just the competitive ones. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. So uh, the, when stores first get this, uh, there's going to be multiple things they should do. I mean, I would recommend that a store running this would probably want to, first of all, download the game tracker, which instructions in the kit for this, and maybe run an open play night, something a bit more casual, get people into your store, let them know, hey, this is where we're going to be playing Keyforge going forward. And then everyone can get a bit of something for coming along and playing. The community can grow, get to know each other in a nice casual environment, very welcoming for new players. And for me, that'd be a good place to kick off uh, Keyforge. Exactly. And that's a great opportunity for a store to bring players in, show them that low barrier of entry, and get them into the community. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. So you said that there are several ways that this kit can be used, yeah. and uh, what does that mean for a store? Like when they arrive. Well, they've got the they they've got this lovely open play thing they can do, and, and the second thing I would suggest they kind of move on to would be leagues. So uh, a store can run a league, a league, a, a league. league yeah. yeah. So stores can run leagues really easily with this. It's participation based. You can reward them for coming in and playing, and a store can kind of design the league how it suits their their store and their player base. Whether it's a, a set day every every week or every month, or whether it's uh, a period of time they have to get their games in them a four pack. They, we'll, let, we'll let the stores decide how they want to do that, but they can utilize this kit to do physical prizes for a league as well, which is quite easy. That's awesome. Yeah, and then there's also, like, Richard Garfield has come up with a really cool idea for a team league that we're going to talk about a little bit more in the future, but uh, that's something for another episode. But yeah, something something really cool we can do. Okay, there. a team league. Yeah. So wait, well, you got to you got to tell us a little bit. You can't, you can't <laughs> <Okay>. just... <laughs> I'll tell you a little bit about the Team League. So the Team League is the idea whereby uh, you form a team. And the team could be pretty much any size. It could be 20 of you if you really want to. Uh, but you'll have a predetermined number of people who play weekly or monthly in the league. So let's say it's three uh, or five or it could be more. Uh, but as a team, between rounds, you are going to be working together to decide which Archons you want to take to the league. Mm -hmm. So you can test with yourselves. You can discuss amongst yourselves which decks you think are going to be strongest and why. Uh, and what's really nice about it is that... I mean, I might be super busy with work, or I might have lots of family commitments, and I might not be able to actually go and play regularly, but I can have an input in a team, and the results of the team are shared amongst us. So I can have that input, even if it's just a bit of a discussion online or a meet up with friends, that we can decide on the Archons, and then my friends can go and play them and compete on my behalf. And I quite like that that's more of an inclusive way of, of doing things. Oh, that's wonderful. I love the idea that you can really have a, a tight-knit community you know, focused on just a, a stable of your own Archons mm -hmm. and then talk about, okay, oh man, I've played this one so much, but it's going to do great against your matchup this week. We know that other team's been rocking X Archon or Y Archon yeah. and, and know that, like, okay, this is the one, but I can't make it. I've got, I've got a dance recital I've got to get to, Yeah, of course. Or, or maybe <sighs> maybe the, the Archon that I find that I think is perfect, I'm mm -hmm. not very good at playing. Maybe it's, maybe it's Mars and I'm really bad at playing Mars, but Mercedes is great at it. So I'm like, okay, I've discovered this Archon. I think it's perfect, but you should be playing this one. And That's true because, I mean, you know, with Keyforge, it's not just necessarily about the strength of the deck or the strength of the player. Sometimes people have just different play styles that work better with 
with different decks. And this is an excellent way to explore that and get to play with other people's decks besides your own and do exactly, it with yeah. all of your friends. Definitely. It's really engaging. Yeah, well, I just love the opportunity to have a discussion between you and your friends and like talk about your specific team and what strengths and resources you have to pool. Yeah, and I'm looking forward to the team names. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not sure there's going to be some sure. great ones. Um, and, the, and the third kind of the key thing that this is really a key thing that this uh, is for uh, is we're also going live with our chain bound events. So uh, chain bound events, uh, well, can, you can use these as physical prizes, which is partly what they're available for. But our chain bound events are going to utilize our digital rewards, which we've spoken about in the past. Um, so uh, let me take a little bit about the structure of a chain bound event. Yeah, um, yeah, definitely. So uh, depending on the number of players, uh, if there's between five and eight, it'll be three rounds. If it's more than, if it's nine plus, it'll be four rounds. And uh, then the store can decide, depending on their time, whether they want to run best of one or best of three. So if a store is running it in the evening, they'll probably go best of one. And if they've got a bit more time of running it during the day, they can do a best of three format to allow people to play a bit longer. Okay. Um, that's the, the choice the store has with it. They can also decide if it's going to be sealed or Archon. Mm -hmm. uh, but other than that, the game mode is going to be uh, solo. The variant is, is solo. So uh, we want to keep that controlled and make sure we've got a, uh, something that people know what they're doing. So you're only bringing one deck. One deck, right. yep. Okay. Um, and then they can start playing and start earning the digital rewards. Ooh, I love digital rewards. I've been so excited collecting Amber Shards, and I can't wait for an opportunity to spend those. Yeah, so the, the Amber Shards are the first thing you'll win. They're the things that the players will win, and that's one just for taking part and one for each win. Ooh. So if you go to a large chain bound event and win every game, you're going to come away with five Amber Shards. So you could get sort of over 20 in a month if you're getting really good at this. So that's, that's awesome. a really quick way to start gaining more Amber, amber Shards in the app. Uh, but then we'll also start seeing the chains being awarded. Mm -hmm. uh, and the chains, again, it depends on whether it's a three round or a four round event. Uh, during a three round event, uh, if you get one or no wins, uh, you'd actually lose a chain, assuming you have any. Mm -hmm. uh, so if you've already gained some chains previously, it's a good way. If you do badly in a future event, you'll, you'll lose some. If you get two wins, you'll gain two chains. If you get three wins, you gain three chains. Seems when you, yeah, it seems pretty straightforward. Yeah. And when you go up to a four round event, uh, if you have one or zero wins, you subtract one as before. But this time with two wins, there's no change. Three wins, gain three chains, four wins, Gain four chains. So, as as we talked about in chain bound events, the most powerful decks are going to be chained yes. for the subsequent weeks. Absolutely, yeah. and it doesn't happen straight away. It's not like as you gain a win, you gain a chain for the next round. Mm -hmm. At the end of the event, the app will update and it'll tell you how many chains you have for a future chain bound event. Perfect. Yep. And as you gain your chains, you'll also have a, as our first way to level the power level up on your deck. So, if you manage to gain uh, between one and six chains, your deck will become power level one. Mm -hmm. uh, if you go seven and twelve chains, power level two. And if you go to 13 to 18 chains, power level three, and you can't go down once you've gained a power level. Sure. And if you get above 19 chains, just by playing chain band events, which is pretty impressive, you'll get up to power level four, which is a key marker right now. Really, why is that? So that's yeah, important because uh, chain band events have a cap for power. Okay. So you cannot bring an Archon along, which is power level four or above. So, uh, I mean, at the moment, this is the only way to gain power levels, and I don't see many Archons or any decks actually getting to power level four just by playing chain bound. If it is, that, that deck is insane and I want it. Yeah, that, <laughs> that, that does sound like a challenge. I, I, I'm really looking forward to the first person that actually manages to do that. Excellent. That would be cool. And I hope it's me. It could be. <laughs> we're going to have, well, have other ways to gain power level in other formats and other events that come along, but this is just our first way of doing it. So you, yeah. you can start interacting with all the digital rewards straight away. With the, with the first level of organized play. Yeah. Okay, so that was a lot of info, but to <laughs> summarize, basically, if you play in a chain bound event, you earn an amber shard for taking part, just one per win. And then depending on your results, you either lose chains or gain chains on that Archon, and then that will come into play at the next chain bound event. Absolutely. And then if you manage to earn enough chains on that Archon, the Archon's power level will increase. Yes. Okay. Uh. I'm just, I'm just so excited to increase the power level of my decks. <laughs> I just the, the, the concept of, of having a deck that's reached that level of achievement is really appealing to me. Uh, and it's great though, because after that you can move on to your next Archon. Exactly, yeah. and, and you can, it gives you a good uh, play cycle that you can move through of leveling up your Archons. Yeah. Right. I'm just, I'm so excited. Yeah, and I'm super excited for the open play nights. Just getting together and meeting new people who are just having fun playing the game that love it as much as I do, it's awesome. Definitely. For me, it's just getting people playing the game more and more. Yes. Like, yeah. I mean, it's kind of my job, but I, I enjoy <laughs> hearing about people playing the game. I enjoy hearing about the stories and then the anecdotes people have. So yeah. the, the more we can encourage that, the better. Yeah. Excellent. That's, that's fantastic. Well, um, I think we're probably just about finished. We're not going to go through a bunch of rules questions this time because we just released the new FAQ. The link to that is on the Master Vault underneath the rules link, and then it's also on the FFG webpage. 
And as always, you are welcome to email your questions to Brad. You can do that through the KF rules at fantasyflightgames.com email. Mm -hmm. There's also a link on our customer service page as well. Yep, to the rules submission form. Yep. But I think we've covered a lot. We talked about season one kits, chain bound tournaments. Check out that FAQ. Um, I'm Brad Andres. I'm Alex. And I'm Mercedes. Thank you guys so much for joining us on the Crucible cast. We're looking forward to seeing you guys next month. Remember to like, comment, and subscribe. Hit the bell. <laughs> <laughs>